we are entering a realm or an era, like it or not, of personal knowledge of your own genome. Um, in the next five to ten years, I suspect, I very strongly suspect, as a matter of course, um, educated people in Western countries, i.e. people who have access to these resources, and it's relatively expensive right now, but it will get cheaper and cheaper over time, people in these places will have access to their own genetic code. They'll understand their risks of various diseases. They'll know more about their ancestry, all of these other things. But it's really the disease stuff that I think gets people a little bit concerned. Um, that's because ancestry is, you know, it's one part of who you are. It's what you've inherited, these genetic markers that don't necessarily affect any phenotypic trait, the way you appear in a disease state, whatever it is. They simply connect you with your ancestors. And so that, you know, I think that's a story that in a way people can kind of accept. But the medically relevant genetic traits that are being tested for now by some of the companies, and more and more that's going to move into the clinic, and you're going to get it done when you go to visit your doctor very early on in life, very likely. That tells you about your future. That's, that's not just about where you came from. That's about where you might be going. And I think that's what scares people a little bit about this. Now, uh, what people should understand, and we as geneticists, I think you know, we have to take it upon ourselves to educate people about why this is important, why it's worth doing. These are not genetic variants that, for the most part, are a death sentence, okay? Yes, there are genetic variants that have, you know, 100% penetrance. If you have them, you are definitely going to come down with a particularly nasty disease, whatever. Those are relatively rare. For the common diseases, the ones that affect most people, that most people will be afflicted by in their lifetimes, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, etc. For those disorders, the, the genetic variants are a little bit iffier i.e., you, you're carrying a variant, but it doesn't mean that you have a 100% chance of coming down with the disease. It just increases your risk. And in fact, you can modulate that risk. You can reduce it by changing your lifestyle. So if you've got a lot of genetic variants that predispose to obesity, if you're really careful about what you eat and you exercise a lot, you can probably avoid that. That's the power of the, the genetic knowledge. It's not the idea that it's going to tell you what your future definitely will be. It tells you one possibility that you can choose to change. You can take your life into your own hands, and you can change your behavior. You can modulate your risk. So if you're tested when you're three years old, five years old, 10 years old, whatever it is, you can actually live your life in such a way that you could probably reduce, mitigate those risks to a large extent. Potentially in the future, there might be drugs you could take that would help to reduce those risks. But the idea is that this is meant to be empowering information. It's not meant to take away your choice. I think that's the fear. It's this idea that you're going to get a test result and it's going to kind of force you into a corner. You're not going to have any choice. This is what you're going to die of. Like you're going to get a little certificate that says you're going to die at age 62 on April the 17th of this particular disorder. No, it's not like that at all. It tells you about your relative risks relative to everybody else. And I think that is you know, something that's tremendously powerful. And I think that future generations, our children's generation, my daughter's generation, or perhaps their kids, will look back on this era and say, I can't believe that people were debating this. I mean, honestly, how could they live their lives blindly, knowing that there were risks out there? Um, you know, think about parents these days, women who are in their 40s who decide to get pregnant and they want to test the fetus to see if it has Down syndrome or another trisomy or whatever it might be, a genetic problem, which we know the risks of because we know that older women have higher risks of these things. Some women choose not to get tested, but most do get tested. They want to know what those risks are. Um, I, I think that people will have a similar view in the future of broad um, genome scanning, knowing your overall risks of all these common diseases. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think, again, it's a very empowering thing.